Well, it's the afternoon of September 11th. Elk season's been going on for a little over a week now, and I've been out a few times. Uh, it was real warm the first week and not much activity. Uh, last couple days, it's getting down below freezing at night here, and I started running into elk about two days ago. I had one bugling at me, got within about 35, 40 yards of it, but uh, it wouldn't come out of the trees, and it wasn't coming to cow calls. Uh, and so we just have to wait for him to get more aggressive as the rut hits. What I thought I'd do today is walk you through some of the stuff that I take out in the field with me. Maybe it'll give you some ideas of things that you're not using that might be helpful. Or if you want to uh, put a message on my site, you can tell me something you've got that I'm not using that you might be find beneficial as well. So uh, check out my stuff, see what you think, and uh, hopefully it'll be helpful to you. And uh, as the season progresses and we all get in the field, hopefully we'll all get to knock down some animals and at the same time have a great experience. So here's my stuff. To start out with, I use a leg pack system that was made by uh, the Summit uh, equipment out of uh, Boise, Idaho. And uh, I don't know if they're actually making these anymore, but uh, I really enjoy them. They, it's a waist belt. With two thigh packs and then two smaller um, cartridge packs that uh, are above those. And the advantage of these is that uh, your weight is, your carrying weight is actually lowered to below your waist, and it makes you more stable when you're when you're hiking, especially when you're going, you know, up or down hills and stuff. So, you know, I really like these things. And uh, I checked on the internet the other day, and I couldn't find them anymore. So, I'm not sure they're still making them. And this is me with my leg packs on. Uh, you can see I've got uh, two top packs here. Uh, I keep my camera equipment in these two, uh, along with my fire making equipment and a few other things. And then I've got my two packs here with uh, got my water on each side, lantern, uh, all the food, everything else I need. So, you know, it, it keeps my upper body pretty much free, other than just you know my bow sling and uh, my, my binoculars and that kind of stuff. But I'm not fighting uh, pack straps. For a lot of a lot of my uh, stuff. So, anyway, that's these are the leg packs, and this is how it looks from behind. So, uh, pretty comfortable. I like these uh, platypus bladders. I take two of them with me, one in each leg pack, and I like them because they're almost no weight when they're empty, and they collapse down to no volume. And uh, so, it's got plenty of water for me for a day between the two of these things. So. You know, I've had these for quite a while, and uh, I find them real effective. They're my binoculars. Uh, they're a pair of uh, 8x32 Leicas. Uh, I've found that uh, the better quality of the optics, the better they perform in low light. And obviously, when you're scouting for elk, uh, you're looking a lot of times uh, early in the morning, late in the evening, and trying to pick up where the elk can be the next day. And so the better quality optics better chance of uh, seeing what you're looking for and uh, actually I had a friend of mine uh, named Carl Butler who uh, introduced me to good quality optics I had a pair of $50 binoculars and he had a pair of Schwarzkis and he you know I looked through mine and looked through his when we were you know looking on the hillside at some elk one night and uh, it, I was amazed at the difference so I got a pair of these and I enjoy them very much I have a uh, just a folding uh, Gerber drop blade that's, uh, that I take with me and uh, then I also have this uh, Light Hunter series by Knives of Alaska which uh, is an exceptional set of knives also comes with also comes with a steel and uh, it's got this uh, cleaver which is really nice for for skinning and uh, then it's you know it's got the caping knife as well uh, it's a nice lightweight set and uh, I found the quality very good. So, Knives of Alaska, really good set of knives. Take a uh, multi-tool with me. This one happens to be a buck. I've also got a leather man, but this one's a little bit lighter, so I take this one. But uh, multi-tool is always good for uh, when you're out in the field. I remember one time Carl and I were uh, back in and we had some horses with us and the horses were getting pretty winded and we, we took a shortcut and we found a barbed wire fence in the way and we used the multi-tool to undo the, the, the fence from the post so that we could uh, scoot the horses underneath it and then put the fence back up. So 
it uh, comes in handy in a lot of ways. The multi-tool is always a good thing to take with you when you're in a film. Uh, and always take an Allen wrench set with me because if you need to adjust your bow, if something comes loose, uh, you're, you're in real bad trouble if you don't take your, your Allen wrenches with you. So always remember to, to pack a set of those. I have one of these uh, folding blade uh, tree saws that uh, I take with me. This is a kind of a Walmart special. It's a Coolins, but uh, it does the job. And uh, you know, if you're trying to set up a tree stand or for whatever reason you need something in the field, you know, it's it's great to have a, a saw with. You. Don't forget your squeeze breeze. Make sure you got something to make sure you can check your windage. Uh, I usually pack two of these, one in my pack and then I throw one in my dashboard because it just seems like sometimes uh, when I'm coming home I empty my pockets and leave one somewhere and I, so I always have an extra, a spare one in the car so that uh, I, uh, I get it out before I go hunting. So, But uh, these things aren't expensive and you know, they're essential for when you try to keep track of wind when you're, when you're out in the field. <laughs> when I first buy my tags, I, uh, I put them in this. It's, it's actually a little... Uh, neck wallet that they use for uh, skiers and stuff but I just put all my tags my license and everything in this and hang it around my neck underneath my clothes and then I, I'm sure I've always got my stuff and also in there I always stick a compass uh, you know I've got my GPS but uh, you know if your battery dies or something you, you need you know I've, I've been turned around before a compass is always nice to have so get yourself a fairly inexpensive compass and stash it somewhere just to be on the safe side. Technology is wonderful, but having a few backup systems is always good as well. I always take a length of rope. Um, up here where we're at, there's a lot of grizzly bears, and uh, so if you knock something down, you get it. If you can't pack it all at once. Uh, grizzly bears can't climb trees, so you can hang it from the tree, get it up a little bit, and uh, you know, and, and keep your meat from getting uh, becoming fodder for the for the bears. You don't want to see a chow line when you get back. So, you know, length of rope's always good. When it comes to calls, uh, I've got uh, four various call, uh, cow calls that I uh, just put on a lanyard and hang around my neck. And uh, I also have a mouth call that I take with me. And uh, then uh, I've got, of course, I've got my uh, bugle that I take as well. So. Got bugles, four mouth call, four cow calls, and then a, and then one mouth call. So, you know, it gives you pretty much a wide range of what you want. Some guys are better with mouth calls than other. I'm not that good at it. I'm better with uh, with these things. So, but uh, you know, whatever works for you is great. But uh, take a few a variety because sometimes elk will hit on one and won't hit on another. So, you know, a little bit of diversity is always great. Always take a little toilet paper with you. When you're in the field, you never know when nature calls, and branches and pine cones aren't fun. So, uh, you know, always pack a little extra in your in your kit just to make sure you've got something just in case. But uh, a little toilet paper or some of those wet wipes, whatever you want to take with you, but take something with you just to be safe and comfortable. Um, I have a set of gloves that I, I think I bought these at Kmart or something. But uh, they're fingerless gloves, they're camouflage. These things work great. I've had these things about uh, six or eight years now. I think it only cost me like four bucks or something. But uh, when it gets cold, they're warm. They're great camel for your hands. And uh, I like the fingerless because, you know, it doesn't interfere with the work of my uh, release. And uh, so these things are great. And then I have my hood that I take with me so that, you know, if I get in a situation where I, you know, I need a hood, I've got it available as well. So, you know, and there's been a few times where, you know, I've, been real close to elk and, and the hood has helped me from being recognized. So, you know, hoods are great. I always pack a candy bar too with me. I like Snickers, but uh, you always need something just in case you get stuck somewhere for a while and it's slower than going in or out than you thought. You know, food's good, you know, some cookies, Snickers, protein bars, whatever, but uh, pack some food with you besides the water, you know, and uh, keep your energy up. Always take two sources of fire with me. Um, I usually take a lighter um, because it's easy and then I have this magnesium stick that I, that I picked up. Uh, this one doesn't matter how wet it gets it'll work but uh, you know if you ever get stuck overnight you're gonna want to have access to fire and uh, so make sure you that you pack matches 
but pack an alternative in case your matches get wet or something, or in case your lighter runs out or breaks, it's mechanical. Uh, I always like to have a backup system that's non-mechanical just to be on the safe side, and so that's the reason I like the magnesium stick. So, you know, you know try what works for you, but uh, always take two sources of fire when you go out in the field just to be safe. And then for a source of light, um, I actually take uh, my lantern that I invented. This is the flash lantern. And uh, the reason that I, one of the reasons I designed this was because I wanted something that was really lightweight that I could take out in the field and in the pack with me and that, uh, give me a few more uh, options than just using a flashlight or a headlamp. It, it uses a regular LED flashlight. This happens to be a Dorsey. It's a 200 lumen flashlight. And then there's a base that you uh, drop the flashlight into and you just screw the top on. And when you, as you put the top on, what it does is lock the flashlight into place in the lantern so that it becomes one unit. And as you know, LEDs are really bright, but they're directional. And what this does is take the, the, uh, the directional light of the, of the flashlight, and as it hits this uh, prism here, it, it disperses the, the light and makes it uh, a lantern. And so it spreads the light out. And things really bright at night. The one nice thing about it is, is that there's times where you're gutting or something where you're going to want a lantern light versus a flashlight or a headlamp. I don't know how many times you've been doing something and you've had, you know, somebody holding your flashlight for you, you know, and they'll look away and next thing you know you can't see because the, the flashlight went w whichever way they were looking. And this way you don't have to worry about it because it, it disperses a great light. Uh, without the flashlight itself, the lantern only weighs 6.8 ounces, so it's, it's lightweight and it gives you that ability. Um, it also comes with a bracket that I take out in the field with me. It's a, uh, just, you just put it in, twist it, and it allows you to hang it. I use it, uh, let's say uh, I'm getting, I want to, I can hang it from a tree or something. So that uh, it gives me a constant sort of light, source of light while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Uh, the flash lantern. Uh, it runs on three AAA batteries. It's this particular flashlight. So I take an extra three batteries with me when I'm uh, when I'm out hunting. Between the batteries in here and the ones in here, it gives me a total of eight hours of light, of of solid light. So I can make it through an entire night with just uh, these three three batteries and the ones that are in the lantern. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is uh, GPS. You know, I've got a Garmin that I use, and also I have uh, my iPhone. And my iPhone has a Cabela's app on it, which is the, uh, uh, it's the Recon Hunt. And for uh, people that are out west, especially where it, it, uh, it actually uses uh, Google Earth to, uh, to superimpose your waypoints and everything on, and it gives you a really great picture of where you're at and the topography of, of where you're at. So, uh, you know, you know, having a GPS is really important to set your waypoint so you can find, if you knock down game or you put up a tree stand or you just find a good place, you can mark all those places with your GPS. So whether you're using a Garmin or using your iPhone, the one nice thing about using an iPhone too is, uh, you know, when a lot of times when we're hunting, uh, we'll just put on vibrate and then we can text each other and let's know let each other know what's going on and you know it gives us a way to communicate without making noise we used to take walkie-talkies but those are really noisy and this is a lot better so you know this is one of the thing one of the tools that I use love this thing and I love the Cabela's app it's a really good app this is my bow um, it's a renegade SBD I think it's 31 inches long, weighs three pounds without stuff on it. Uh, it shoots fast. I can get about 285 out of it. Um, shooting uh, carbon arrows with the with the short fletchings and uh, using the shuttle cock broadheads and uh, 28 inch arrows, I'm, I'm shooting about 400, just a teeny bit over 400 grains with the 100 grain broadhead. Uh, stabilizer, and then uh, my sight and my arrow rest are both from Vital Gear. This is their uh, Star Trek with a single pin angle, angular uh, pin sight. And 
This is their fall away air, arrow rest, which I really love. It uh, captures your, uh, your arrow when it's at rest. It's a really good product. And uh, so I'm real happy with that as well. Uh, ben Afshari, who uh, designed and manufactured these things, is a great guy and makes really good stuff. So, uh, but uh, Vital Gear is really good. And then for uh, quiver, this is a uh, Alpine quiver that I put on here and uh, a five arrow. So, you know, you know, decide what you like and uh, enjoy out in the field, but this thing's fairly light and works well for me. So, uh, this particular camo that I'm using is, uh, is uh, King's Camo. Uh, it's out of uh, Utah, and uh, I think the, probably the biggest reason I like it is the patterns, pines and quakies, and obviously that's where I hunt. So uh, pines and quakies work well for me. So you know, I like the King's Camo. The design's good. It's comfortable, and, uh, and it seems to blend in real well. So that's what I use. Uh, also, make sure you get a good pair of boots um, because uh, if your feet are miserable, you know, everybody, everything's miserable. So, uh, you know, I, you know, these uh, boots that I have here are Vasks, and uh, I like those a lot. They seem to fit me real well. But uh, make sure you break them in before you go hunting, because you know, if you break them in the last minute, you're going to be real sore by the time you get home. So, anyway, those are those are the, the, the tools that I use when I go hunting. It gives you kind of an idea of what I carry around with me. And uh, I hate being out in the field and missing something. So, you know, I, I try to stay pretty prepared. So. And the other thing I do, oh, and I don't have it with me. It's in the house. But uh, I also have a 40 caliber Glock with a shoulder holster that I, that I take with me as well. Um, you know, I take bear spray, but I always like having uh, something else just to be on the safe side. And my Glock has a 15-round clip in it. So I figure between 15 rounds of 40 caliber and you know, and some bear spray one way or another you know I'll, I'll make a home at night so you know do what you're comfortable with and uh, be safe and uh, enjoy the hunt i'm gonna see if i can get out here tonight and see if i can do some damage so we'll see what happens so have a great hunt bye